In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a solar oven out of some basic items, most of which are items that you can find around your house. This is part of our DIY series showing you how to make things on the cheap. I'll take you through each step and at the end, we'll see if it actually works by trying to cook some eggs. So let's get started. Supplies. While you may have some of these items already, I'll also show you in a moment how to scavenge for these items if you want to save even more money. Here's the basics. Two boxes, $2.50. Glue, $2. Knife or razor, $4. Tape, $5. Construction paper, $4. Mirrors, $16. Two magnifying lens, $18. Tape measure. While I bought these boxes at U-Haul, you can use discarded boxes you may throw away. Regarding the magnifying lens, if you want to do a little scavenging, the screen on rear projection TVs from the 90s and 2000s is a big for all lens that can be removed and used. I see these on the curb for trash pickup occasionally. You'll also see them on sites like Craigslist as people are trying to get them away for free. I'll link to a video that shows how to extract that lens if you're interested, as those would work in this project. Steps to build a solar oven. Step one, sizing our boxes. For this project, I'll work with these two small boxes that will resize. What we want in the end is for two boxes with the same depth and with one box slightly smaller so it will fit inside the larger box with room on size. To achieve this, you can take boxes that you probably already have laying around and resize them, which I'll show you how to do. The key to remember is that based on the size of the resized boxes, it will determine the quantity and size of your mirrors and magnifying lens. For example, I have two magnifying lens, so if I put them side by side and measure them, I'll know the width and length of the box. Additionally, the size of the box will inform me as to how many and what sizes of mirrors to get based on the basic size of our box. Okay, so let's start with determining our depth and resizing the boxes to match this depth. I'd like both boxes to be eight inches deep. Again, you can adjust the depth as you see fit based on what you foresee putting inside the box to cook. For the box that we're gonna make smaller, we want a depth of about eight inches. All I have to do is measure a depth of eight inches from the bottom and mark it off all the way around, and then we're gonna cut it with our knife. And as you can see, we basically cut the entire top of the box off, leaving this part of the box. For the larger box, we also want it to be a depth of about 8.5 inches, adding about half an inch compared to the smaller box. So we'll need to take off some on the top. We'll also wanna keep the flaps as we'll mount the mirror to the flap in just a moment. So let's do it like we did with the smaller box and measure about eight and a half inches up from the bottom of our box and then draw a line around the box as we did a moment ago. But the way we cut this box will be different. For this one, we're gonna put our mirrors at the top of this line and draw a line above the mirrors on the flaps. What are we doing here? We're determining how big the flaps need to be that will support the mirrors that we're gonna tape them to momentarily. We'll then cut off the remaining section above the flaps as we are not gonna need them. Finally, Cut those corners down to the bottom of the line that we drew earlier. Again, the goal here is to cut down the side of the boxes so we attach the mirrors to these flaps later. Additionally, we can put some very light cuts here on these lines where our mirror will need to attach on the box and hinge outward. So now that we know the depths of our two boxes, we need to go back to our first box that we cut all the flaps off and resize it. We want roughly about an inch to an inch and a half space between the small and large box when we put it inside the large box. So we're gonna to need to make the length and width shorter of our smaller box. You can do this by taking the box and laying it flat. We're gonna cut each of the four corners of the box. Next, stack the short sides and the two long sides on top of each other. You're gonna want some type of cutting surface which we'll place underneath these boxes. We're going to take about three inches off the length on the long side of the box and about three inches off the short side of the box. To do this, measure three inches on the long side and three inches on the short side and draw lines. We also wanna add a little flap as shown here on both ends of the box, giving us four flaps in total. So draw that out as well. Now, cut around the lines we just drew, again, leaving the little flaps here. Now that they're all cut, we're gonna use our glue to reconnect our sides together, but be sure to leave gaps as I'll demonstrate. Connecting the long side to the short side, and then connect the short side to the long side, and finally, the long side to the short side.
Now while filming, if you notice, I accidentally glued two of the long sides together. I turned the camera off and noticed this, so fortunately the glue had not set, and I was able to reassemble them together correctly. So just be sure to follow the pattern of gluing the sides together in order of short, long, short, and then long. And as you can see, we glued three tabs together to the boxes, but left one undone. Once the three flaps dry and the bond is completed, we'll come back and finish gluing this last flap to the last side. And here's what the final results look like after I tape the flaps on the bottom of her box. Our smaller box sits inside the larger box with some spacing around it. Step two, adding construction paper. In the bottom of the smaller box, you can either glue or tape your construction paper to the inside of the bottom of the box. Step three, add the mirrors. So let's add the mirrors to the flaps of the larger box. These mirrors will serve to focus the rays of the sun into the box and heat it up. These particular mirrors came with some small double-sided adhesive tape. I would recommend a little extra tape to ensure we really get these to stick on the box flaps. Before I bought these mirrors, I measured out the size of my box so I knew what size and how many I would need. Let's apply the tape on the back of the mirrors. As you can see here, I doubled up a little with duct tape and add the mirrors to the flap of our box. And here's our final result. We'll discuss how to adjust the mirrors momentarily. Step four, add the magnifying lens. We'll now line up the two magnifying lenses on top of the smaller box that will sit inside the larger box. But be careful to make sure the textured side is pointed up. Just rub your finger on the lens. You'll quickly see which side is textured and which side is smooth. Again, the textured side is pointed up. Step five, angle the mirrors. Now that we've built everything, it's the moment of truth. Take your entire setup and place it under the sun. You're gonna notice that I add one more thing, aluminum foil. Before I had the foil on, the box started smoking when I placed it under the sun with a magnifying lens, but after adding the foil, the issue was resolved. We'll angle the mirrors to reflect the sun onto the magnifying lens. You'll know you've done it correctly when the light is hitting the top of the lens. We can keep these mirrors in place using sticks to prop up the flaps that the mirrors are taped to. At this point, you're gonna notice that it will take a little time to figure out, so be patient if this is the first time you try it. Does it work? Shown here, I'm using a meat thermometer and on my initial trial, I got a temperature that came to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I added some eggs in a small pot to cook them. Now it's important to note that you've gotta be patient as it took me a little over an hour to cook these. If clouds are overhead, definitely expect that this is not gonna cook as quickly. But the key takeaway is that we didn't have to use any energy source other than the sun using items that you can pick up that are affordable or fine if you're willing to do a little scavenging. Hopefully this video gave you enough information to help you build your own DIY solar oven. Now the beauty of this is obviously you don't have to have fuel on hand, you can just use the sun overhead, but you do have to be patient. It's not gonna cook things right away, it might take an hour or two, and you kinda have to babysit it, move it around the track with the sun and adjust the mirrors, but at the end of the day it will actually work. I will also post a link up in the cards in the description and comment section below to a video where we reviewed a professional solar oven like this, but of course it was professionally made. If you have any feedback or any questions, feel free to post that below in the comments section. As always, stay safe out there.